This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Check the link in the description to get three months free. The Google Pixel line for 2020 is shaping up to be just a little bit weird. Potentially we're looking at three new Pixel phones, two of them with 5G connectivity, none of them running a Snapdragon 865, and apparently none of them carrying the XL brand name. So let's break down exactly what's going on and what you should expect. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to Android Central here on YouTube so you don't miss our full hands-on coverage of this year's Pixels when they do eventually land. So we'll get to Pixel 5 soon, but first we need to address the Pixel 4a. To do so, let's look back approximately 800 years to the simpler and more innocent time that was January 2020. That's back when we caught wind of what seemed to be three Pixel 4a variants, codenamed Sunfish, Bramble, and Redfin. Those are all fishes, by the way, in keeping with Google's long-running naming convention for Pixel and Nexus codenames. We had a whole video on this at the time, but TLDR, based on references in the Android open source project, code snoopers found that Sunfish would run a Snapdragon 730, while Bramble and Redfin would use the moderately faster and 5G capable Snapdragon 765 series. At the time, that seemed to point to a vanilla Pixel 4a, as well as possibly two versions of a 4a XL, both in 4G and 5G flavours. Around a month later, YouTuber John Prosser of Front Page Tech floated this potential Pixel 5 design from his sources, though mentioned to take this pretty weird looking design with a pinch of salt. Flash forward a couple more months and it was reported there'd be no Pixel 4a XL, presumably leaving Bramble and Redfin as the Pixel 5 and Pixel 5 XL. Plenty of corroborating information for the 4a, including live photos of the phone, surfaced around that same time. Still, there was no sign of the phone itself actually launching. The 4A was first rumoured to emerge in May at the cancelled Google I.O. conference, then it was June and then July. No one seemed to know if this was related to the coronavirus situation or just internal indecision at Google. Meanwhile, we got our first hints of Pixel 4A and Pixel 5 pricing based on Google market research and reports from 9to5Google. The Pixel 4a would start at $299 or $349 depending on who you believed, while the Pixel 5 was tipped to cost $699 a really significant price cut from last year's Pixel 4 there. Before we continue, I want to talk about this video's sponsor, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is a great way to keep your internet activity private and sidestep content restrictions, so your data isn't exposed to your ISP or whoever happens to be running that sketchy looking public Wi-Fi you might be connected to. With ExpressVPN, you get access to over 3,000 servers worldwide, making it easy to watch media or visit sites that might be blocked in your own country. For me, that means I can watch John Oliver's new episodes, which are blocked here in the UK, by sneakily pretending to be a fake American. ExpressVPN keeps your IP address hidden without slowing down your connection, has no bandwidth limits, and 24-7 customer support. You can get it for Windows, Android, iOS, Mac, Linux, and even routers. You can get three months of ExpressVPN for free when you sign up for an annual plan, and they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're not satisfied. Links are in the description, and thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Earlier in the summer, we thought we had a pretty good idea of what to expect from the Pixel 4a and Pixel 5 series. But in the past few days, everything we thought we knew has gotten turned on its head. Leaked renders from accessory maker Pig2, the guys behind those CAD renders of the apparently cancelled Pixel 4a XL, published what they said was the Pixel 5, which outwardly looked like a Pixel 4a, just with slightly smaller bezels. A lot about those renders didn't make a whole lot of sense. A rear fingerprint scanner on a big name flagship in 2020? Really? and only dual cameras when increasingly even cheaper phones are including three? Knowledgeable people in the Android community were raising doubts about whether this really was a Pixel 5. And then there was a pretty significant breakthrough that shed some much needed light on how these three Pixel phones might shape up. References in a new version of the Google Search app outed Bramble as the Pixel 4a 5G and Redfin as the Pixel 5. But that only added to the confusion. Would the Pixel 4a 5G and the Pixel 5 really share the same processor? And what size would the 5 and the 4a 5G end up being, regular or XL? And in the absence of any Pixel 4a announcement, when would these phones actually be launched? Would Google still try for a summer announcement for the 4a? And if so, would the 5G model arrive alongside it, or wait and chip with the Pixel 5 in October? Google perhaps accidentally did its part to dispel some of the uncertainty with this cheeky render leak of the Pixel 4a recently, showing both the front and back of the phone on the Google Store for a short time. Meanwhile, John Pross announces an August 3rd launch for the 4a is on the cards. As far as the Pixel 5 goes though, it's still a bit of an enigma. Were Pig 2's images legit, or might the goofy triple camera version that leaked earlier in the year be the real deal? Anything's possible, but that version certainly would look out of place next to the Pixel 4a series. 
As for sharing the same CPU across Pixel 4a 5G and Pixel 5, it's worth remembering that there's more to a phone than its processor. The Pixel 5 could justify its extra price with a faster 90Hz screen, more storage and RAM, extra cameras, nicer materials, a bigger battery, or any number of features that could make it more competitive at that $699 price point. It's also worth noting that Pixel 5, aka Redfin, could in fact use anything up to a Snapdragon 768G which is still part of the SM7250 family of chips referenced in the Android open source code back in January. The 768G is a faster version of the 765, with the GPU in particular getting a pretty hefty bump in clock speeds. The dimensions obtained by Pig2 in recent days point to the Pixel 5 being somewhere between an iPhone 11 and an iPhone 11 Pro in terms of physical size, with around a 5.78 inch display. In other words, closer to a small phone than a big one. That raises more than a few questions around battery life, especially since the Pixel 5 would certainly include 5G connectivity and also considering Google's pretty grim track record for Pixel battery life. On the other hand, if you accept that the 4a 5G is a larger phone, then the apparent cancellation of the 4G Pixel 4a XL suddenly makes a lot more sense. It's easier to just upsell anyone who wants a larger 4a on the 5G equipped model with a slightly faster chip versus also making a 4G version with a Snapdragon 730. But then, what's the option for Pixel 3 XL and those looking for a comparable upgrade in 2020? Releasing only a single, smaller Pixel 5 that's not much different on paper compared to the 4a? Well, that would seem to be a major retreat for Google, a company that's at least attempted to play in the high-end Android space for the past decade. Some, including Android Police's David Ruddock, have speculated that carrier pressure following the flop of the Pixel 4 has forced Google into this particular part of the market. Obviously the US is important, but it's not the be-all and end-all of Google hardware sales. So who knows when we'll actually see any of these new Pixel phones. A big shakeup of the Pixel line has coincided with a major pandemic that's upended life and business for most of the world. That means just about anything could happen. Certainly the situation around the Pixel 5 seems murky, and it's going to be fascinating to see how things shake out over the next few months. Stick with us and subscribe to Android Central here on YouTube to see our full hands-on coverage of the Pixel 4a, 4a 5G, and Pixel 5 in whatever form they end up taking. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.